Welcome back to Organic Chemistry 2 Radicals and Polymerization. In this lecture, we'll look in more detail at how radicals are formed. Let's imagine now we wanted to obtain bromine radicals uh, via homolysis. Yeah? So there are two ways we could go about this. Yeah? So we could, for example, think about generating bromine radicals by heating HBr. Yeah? In this case, we would get a, our bromine radical and a hydrogen radical. Yeah, so you could you could in principle draw in fishhook arrows, yeah, breaking this hydrogen bromine bond. Yeah, however, what you find is yeah, a hydrogen radical, so it means a proton with an electron is never formed. Yeah, it would be a way too reactive species. So this particular pathway would not work at all. Um, however, we could imagine shining light on Br2, yeah? so our bromine gas. In this case, again, we represent the homolytic cleavage of our bromine-bromine bond via our fishhook arrows, and we get our two bromine radicals. So um, the key to understanding uh, which bonds uh, cleave homolytically is indeed bond strength. Yeah? Um, so here in this case, you can uh, imagine this hydrogen bromine bond is highly polarized and therefore uh, fairly strong. Yeah? Whereas our bromine bromine bond yeah, is not very polarized and could be pot potentially cleaved with quite some ease. Yeah? So let's have a look um, at the uh, uh, Gibbs free energy for the homolytic cleavage of a couple of, of such bonds. Yeah? As we discussed, on the, on the introductory slide to um, radical generation, um, such an oxygen-oxygen bond can be f uh, cleaved fairly easily. Yeah, so here we have only 151 kilojoule per mole for that cleavage. Um, between uh, the bond between bromines, 192. Yeah, and the moment we go to more polar bonds, yeah, like here for example, uh, with a hydroxyl group and an alcohol for example, or our HBr group or even worse, a carbon-oxygen bond, yeah? we see that these values um, rise quite, quite a bit. Yeah? Compare this yeah, with uh, the visible spectrum. So we go from 190 kilojoule per mole for red light all the way to, yeah, let's say, around 420 kilojoule per mole for UV. Um, you see that um, our oxygen-oxygen, yeah, or our bromine-bromine bonds can, can be cleaved by heat or light. Yeah, so these would work. Whereas all these bonds here on the right hand side, they are too strong to be cleaved by heat or light. So in order to understand radical formation yeah, and radical reaction, uh, reactions in general, we have to uh, always keep in mind what kind of bonds are broken and what kind of bonds are formed. So some bonds are particularly susceptible to homolysis by heat. Yeah, and we see here two examples of such molecules that contain such weak sigma bonds. Yeah, so here in the uh, upper example in dibenzoyl peroxide, the weak sigma bond in question is here between our oxygen atoms. Yeah, and when we heat this compound up to 60 to 80 degrees, you're homolytically cleaving your oxygen-oxygen bond, yeah, and you end up with two radicals, relatively stable radicals. It 
can go on to initiate further reactions. Um, below we have AIBN, yeah, so azo, bis iso, put your nitrile, and here the weak sigma bonds, uh, which can be cleaved homolytically by a heat are between the carbon and nitrogen. Yeah. Now you might wonder carbon nitrogen bonds. Um, they don't seem that weak. Yeah, normally they are not, but in this particular case, when we're heating up AIBN, um, it's fairly straightforward to kick out a molecule, and that molecule would be our uh, nitrogen gas. Yeah. So you form your radical species and nitrogen, yeah, which then leaves the, um, the solution. Yeah. So you are forming, in effect, um, two stable radicals. Yeah. More on this later. How this radical is stabilized and a gas let's now take a look at the second uh, example of how to make radicals and that is electron transfer or reduction yeah that means transfer of a single electron uh, from, for example, a group one metal, yeah, like sodium or lithium, to a molecule, yeah. So in this case, we are solubilizing sodium metal, yeah, generating our uh, sodium uh, cations, and we have um, freely available electrons here, which can then go on and add to a carbon oxygen pi star molecular orbital. So let's draw that in. Yeah, again using fish hook arrows. We're cleaving this carbon oxygen bond and we're generating here on the right hand side a radical anion. Yeah, so this is our ketyl radical. Yeah, but ketyl radical is best uh, represented as a carbon radical and as an oxy anion. Yeah. Um, in practice, um, this would give you a vivid blue solution yeah, due to the solvated electrons, yeah, or uh, that means due, uh, due to the formation of a radical anion species. Um, such a solution of sodium and benzophenyl ketal radicals is often used for a preparation of anhydrous solvents. Yeah? So it gives you um, less than 10 ppm of, of water. Um, for example, in THF stills, this trick is used fairly routinely. Um, however, there is a point of caution. Yeah? So a concentration of such a dispersion or solution of sodium, ketal radicals and solvent, may easily lead to explosions. Yeah? So this was back in 2000 and, uh, what is this? 2015, I believe, um, at the University of Liverpool, um, the explosion of a THF still led to injuries uh, and uh, as you can probably just about make out in this, in this picture it blew out uh, I think like all of these windows in the top floor uh, laboratory there. So uh, caution is advised. And here are the final three examples from our introductory slide. Um, uh, these are radicals formed uh, from other radicals. Yeah. Um, 
this number three here. Uh, this is substitution or sometimes called abstraction. So here in this case, uh, our alkoxy radical, yeah, our RO dot abstracts a hydrogen um, from uh, this HBr bond yeah, to give your alcohol and a new radical. Yeah? So let's draw these curly arrows in here as, uh, again. So we're forming a new bond between oxygen and hydrogen and we're cleaving this hydrogen bromine bond to generate our alcohol and a bromine radical. Yeah, so this is in effect uh, hydrogen abstraction. Another example is the addition of a radical to, a, to an alkene here, for example. So here our bromine radical adds to this alkene bond. And we are generating um, a new carbon-centered radical here, yeah? And a new carbon-bromine bond. And finally, elimination or homolysis. Yeah, so we've we've met the uh, benzoyl radical uh, already in a couple of examples uh, um, beforehand. Um, now this benzoyl radical can undergo homolysis. Yeah, by elimination of a CO2. So here we're forming a new carbon-oxygen bond by cleavage of this carbon-carbon bond. Yeah, so we are generating a phenyl radical. Yeah, so this is our phenyl radical. And we are kicking out CO2. Now you can imagine if we have two of such phenyl radicals, yeah, then these two can then react further to give you a diphenyl species. So now that we understand how radicals are formed, um, we will next uh, look at what determines the stability of radicals, um, what determines where they are situated and what kind of reactions they can actually undergo. See you next time.